Hey guys, it's Kyle coming back at you with another Homebrew Wednesday on a Friday, but uh, that's how things go sometimes, life gets busy, but uh, better late than never, right? So I took a trip to um, down in the States, um, not the weekend that just passed, but actually the weekend before that, um, and I picked up a bunch of beers that either um, I haven't had before that are, are US craft beers or that uh, you can't get in Canada or at least very easily. I, I know some of them, I'll mention them when I show them, I think you can, but um, let me just do a little bit of show and tell, I'll show you guys what I got. So um, first up here, uh, we have some Dogfish Head 90 Minute, so I picked up a four pack of that. Uh, we also have some Dogfish Head Midas Touch. Uh, actually I should talk a little about these as I'm showing you. So I've had the 90, I had one bottle of it so far. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's it's really good. Uh, definitely one of the top IPAs I've had, um, if not maybe even the best. Although I've had some that might slightly rival it. Midas Touch was really different, but really, really delicious. Um, I got a four pack of that one as well, so I've got some more to enjoy. I've also got a Rogue Chocolate Stout. I've heard a lot of good things about Rogue and I love me my stouts, so we'll be trying that out. I've also got, uh, down from Jimmy's Neck of the Woods, we've got a Stone Arrogant Bastard. Um, so that one should be interesting to try. I think uh, Jimmy's spoken highly of that one as well, so we'll give that one a whirl. Uh, we've also got, from Dogfish Head, I picked up a Chateau Jahu, I believe is how you pronounce that part of their Ancient Ale series. So this is one of the ones that um, basically they discover some recipe or they do, sometimes they do molecular analysis on um, like if they find jars and tombs and stuff like that. So this is actually an ale brewed with honey, hawthorn fruit, and fermented with grape juice. So I'm looking forward to trying that. And then, uh, so those, those three were, the last three I just showed you were the single, um, what size is that even? A pint, I guess? Is that what it says? Uh, yeah, a pint. So, and then we've got, um, I picked up actually the Samuel Adams Harvest Collection Pack. This is a 12 pack. Six different beers, two of each. I'll just quickly run through these because you guys have probably seen most of these before. So Boston Lager, I've tried each of these by the way uh, so far. So Boston Lager was really, really good. Um, it really surprised me. It wasn't what I was expecting from a lager at all. Um, Normally with lager, you know, the styles tend to be very, very light um, and not much flavor, but this almost was ale-like to me. It had um, a lot of body, a lot of maltiness, and um, quite a bit of hops as well for, for a uh, lager. We've also got the Oktoberfest. Um, this one was really good. I um, It's a little lighter than I prefer, but as far as kind of a, a sessionable sort of lawnmower beer goes, Excellent. I mean, a really good. What, what can you really say bad about Sam Adams? But then there was this one too. This is a Latitude 48 um, IPA. This one, um, Jimmy was actually saying to me he thought it was kind of pretty sessionable. I, so when I kind of cracked it open, I was expecting it to be pretty light. But it was actually hoppier than I was expecting, uh, which is really, really awesome. That one was really good as well. Um, we've also got the Pumpkin, Harvest Pumpkin. Um, I really enjoyed this one. This one actually reminds me a lot of the pumpkin ale that I make. Um, and I actually wondered after I drank that if the recipe I originally got my pumpkin ale from wasn't actually a clone of this because it was so close. Um, I'm not sure I'd have to look into that because I got the recipe from Homebrew Talk. But um, we've got the Ruby Mild, which was good as well. Uh, not as good as some of the other ones, but uh, it was still good nonetheless. And then my personal favorite of the six was actually the Hazel Brown. I really, really like this beer a lot. I'd like to try to clone it if I can. I'm not sure how easily that, you know, easy that would be because it says somewhere on here, uh, yes, ale, so it says at the bottom there, hopefully you'll be able to read this, it says ale with natural flavors added. So I don't know what exactly that would entail. Um, I'm guessing maybe the hazel part is some kind of candy sugar or something they're adding, but, um, so I guess what I'm saying is I'm not how, sure how easy that would be to clone, but uh, I'd like to try anyways. Um, so that was some of the stuff I picked up. Um, 
I've been really, really happy with what I've tried so far. Everything has been fantastic. Um, I know I'm really, really looking forward to trying some of the um, the single tins that I have here, the one pint size. So maybe I'll even do a beer review on the channel of one of those. Uh, we'll have to see. But um, anyway, before we get out of here, um, oh, let me just tell you guys quickly too. So the hop update, hops are doing great. I'm probably going to be picking them. I might actually pick some this weekend. We'll have to see if they're ready. But when I looked at them earlier in the week, they looked like they were getting there. They were very, very close. Um, so I might be picking some of those this weekend. And then I'm brewing probably tomorrow. Um, it's between at this point. I want to basically do at this point three big beers that I'm going to age for the winter. So I'm doing a uh, bourbon vanilla porter, which needs to age because you're adding bourbon to it. So it needs time to kind of blend and kind of lose some of the harshness of the bourbon. Um, a double chocolate stout, which, you know, those are always really great aged. And then I want to do another spiced holiday ale. Um, I've got a good, a few, few, all these are good recipes I've actually found on Homebrew Talk, but, um, so I can't really take credit for any of them. But, um, yeah, the holiday ale, you know, just needs time to kind of get those spices blending and kind of mellowed out. And then, um, at some point too, I have to do my pumpkin beer. Uh, that's been pretty much, I think, everyone's favorite so far that they've tried of mine, um, even people that aren't really beer drinkers, because it's got a very unusual kind of, not sweet, but it's very approachable because the hops, you know, it's not really hoppy. It's almost like kind of a multi pumpkin pie sort of thing in your mouth. But uh, anywho, okay, now before we get out of here, um, I'm gonna show you guys, um, I wanna do a, a, because I'm not doing, you know, normally it's a Canadian uh, cologne recipe that we're doing, but since we're not talking about Canadian beer this week, um, let's talk about a Dogfish Head 90 minute clone that um, you guys can brew. So uh, this is a recipe, fairly easy um, as far as, there's not, the, the grain bill's pretty simple. So it's just, uh, this is for a five and a half gallon all grain batch. So basically, and I'll put the, again, everything in the description below. We've got 16 pounds of two row, one and a quarter pound of amber malt. Um, they recommend that you use Thomas Fawcett, I guess. It has the, the distinct flavor that um, uh, Dogfish Head actually has. I believe that's the malt they actually use. Um, so we've got, that's the grain bill. Then we've got the, the hop uh, bill is three ounces of Amarillo, one ounce of Simcoe, one ounce of Warrior. So you mix all the hops together, so all five ounces and then you continuously hop for a 90 minute boil. So essentially what you're doing is you're basically adding, um, you know, a few, few pellets every minute, um, or you could do, you know, a small handful every five or 10 minutes. You don't have to be like, like, you know, a pellet every 30 seconds, like it doesn't have to be that specific, but, um, so, oh, and then this one you mash, just so I kind of skipped that part, you mash at about 150 uh, or so. And um, they recommend you ferment with White Labs 007. Um, I've never actually used that yeast before. That looks to be, let's see, sorry about this. A little on the fly, dry English ale yeast. Um, so you might be able to get away with an SO4, but uh, I'm not sure if it would give you the exact same characteristics. But anywho, so that's the, um, the recipe, guys. I'll put... Um, like I said, everything down in the description below and um, give it a try. Let me know how it is. I'll be trying it eventually. I've got, like I said, the backlog to work through, but um, after trying this IPA, definitely the next IPA I brew, which will probably not be till next year, probably not till um, the spring. Uh, I'll definitely be trying this clone recipe of the Dogfish Head 90 because really, really awesome. So that is it for me this week. I hope everyone had a good homebrew Wednesday. Sorry we missed it. Like I said, better late than never. And um, until next week, guys, until next uh, Homebrew Wednesday, I wish you all happy brewing and uh, cheers.